Hi friends, in our last session we have seen uh, introduction to industrial internet of things and industry 4.0 and even we have discussed about a syllabus that we are going to cover in this subject. In today's session we are going to start with our main chapter that is chapter number one industry, understanding industrial internet of things. This is Pizan Kagdi and I welcome you all for lecture series of IIoT that is industrial internet of things. Now let's begin with our first topic. So the first topic which we need to see is the foundation of industrial internet of things and a cyber manufacturing system, which means basically a uh, historical background. So industry, uh, you, you already know the background, basic background that is when an industrial revol revolution has been started, that is industry one. Now, during industry one, we have transferred from a hand production to a machine production, so, right? That is making use of our machines by uh, using a steam power and a water power, right? That is steam engines and steam turbines. That was a revolution in industry one. <clears throat> Later on, we have shifted to industry two. Now, industry two was a technological revolution, right? In that, uh, that was taken place around the year, if you remember, that is 1870 to 1914. So that was re uh, re uh, re uh, referred as a technological revolution. In that, we have seen a various uh, inventions, such as inventions of electricity, right, uh, making railroads, right. So that was a phase and a period of a great economic growth. Okay, but it has also led to a unemployment to the workers because of a starting of automation. Okay, then after developed the industry three uh, around the year 1970. Till now, we can say that industry three has been fully installed everywhere in the world. Uh, and that was a phase of a digitization. We can say a digital revolution has been taken place. Right? During, uh, now, during that period, we would say economic growth was not that great. Okay, but uh, various things has been introduced like computers, right? Invention of a computer has taken place, PC technologies, uh, then we can say we were using a binary system, 0101 Boolean algebras, okay, Boolean systems, uh, then integrated circuits, microprocessors, all were in, uh, invented uh, during that uh, revolution period, that is uh, around 1970. And after that uh, came a period of industry 4 and that was also came recently, that was in 2011. Now, what, what is there in industry 4? So, we can say that whatever in uh, was present in industry 3 that was a digitization has been connected with internet that is a cyber world so that cyber world and a digitization together forms a industry 4.0 and the idea of that industry 4 has came from one of the german project okay so if we go uh, with that history so iiot has grown from a variety of technologies and their interconnection in manufacturing first attempt for creating a network of things was done in 1970 and it was summarized and given a name as SIEM that is Computer Integrated Manufacturing. Although SIEM idea is 40 years old but most of the challenges are still present. Okay, for example which type of challenges are present? So integration of a managerial and engineering processes and the realization of a flexible and highly autonomous automation. However, in 90s with the rise of lean production. Now the question comes at what is a lean production? So it is a fixed set of tools and techniques which we used to streamline and it is going to improve the company production system which means a fixed process has been uh, followed by the industry to cut down various losses, to cut down the time, right, and to improve the quality. So there are five lean principles. We need to first define the values, then map value stream, then create a flow, then establish a pool system and pursue perfection. Now there was a problem because of a lean production was that excessive IT solutions were increasingly regarded as inefficient, which means we are not focusing on IT solutions at that time in 90s. Okay, so because of that many SIEM projects were already failed. Okay, now when a retrospective has been done, we have found out that there were various, various loopholes present, such as for example, uh, the various loopholes has been already uh, mentioned over here, you can see on your screen, immature IT and communication infrastructure, lack of computational power, lack of data storage capacity, limited connectivity and data transfer rate at that time, right, missing openness of a software tools and a format for data 
exchange. So because of all these drawbacks and limitations, we were not able to uh, make seam projects work efficiently and major of them were failing. Right. So now further what has been developed. So let us move further and see. So seam was basically focusing on a shop floor. Okay. Later product data management has been established. So what is that? So it is a new approach to design network within engineering department connecting product data and people. Okay. Now the idea of product data management. Remember the term is most important product data management idea has been came due to limitation of handling a large amount of product data in case of a, a simple file based system. We know that we need to save the files and we need to store files in a one place to collect a large amount of data. So product data management has been introduced to solve this problem. Okay. Now later on we need to store this data for a life cycle of a product. Okay. So with respect to that a next term has been introduced that is a product life cycle management. It is even called PLM. So the network idea is taken further in which the object is going to remain the same whatever is the objective for product data management. But in this case that data management will be done for a whole life cycle of that product. So PDM is usually regarded as a backbone of PLM providing interface to different applications during the life cycle such as production and services. So both PDM that is product data management and PLM product life cycle management are the prerequisite for IIoT are the most important requirements remember for IIoT industrial internet of things. Now the next term with respect to IIoT is a digital factory. Now what is that? So digital factory is a digital model of a real factory which aims to integrate data model processes and software tools. Therefore a digital factory is a comprehensive model of a real factory that can be used for communication simulation and optimization during its life cycle. So this uh, could be understood in a more better way by the next uh, we can say a flow system is shown. So this figure is a representation of a IIoT as a network of real things and the digital counterparts. Now the first set is a set of network of real things and the next second set is the network of a digital models. Real things includes the real products and the production system both are interconnected with each other and network of digital models are computerized are a digital uh, models that is PLM product life cycle management models and a digital factory which is a uh, we would say which resembles to the real factory and the interaction of both these network of real things and network of digital model give a industrial internet of things you can clearly see it is written. Okay, so from this we can say that it is a conversion from a actual product to its model that is a replica in a digital world PLM models. Okay, now interaction between PLM models and digital factory will take place. Now digital factory is a replica of a production system. So from a production system whatever information is there from a model to the action it is provided to the production system. Okay, so this is a diagram which you need to uh, show for representing industrial internet of things how it is connected to the a network of real things and network of digital models. Next one is a mechatronics. Now what is mechatronics? So it is defined as a discipline that integrates mechanics, electronics and information technology. Next term is a cyber physical system. In general words I can say a cyber physical system is a one which is going to connect a physical system or a physical component with a cyber world or a cyber component that is internet components very simple in in that case. Okay, now there is a certain definitions which we need to remember. So NASA has given a definition for CPS that is cyber physical system as an emerging class of a physical system that exhibits complex patterns of a behavior due to highly capable embedded software components. Okay, so this definition is quite typical but let us understand this uh, by taking an example over here you can clearly see I have shown uh, two components first uh, represents a cyber component next is a physical component. Now what involves in a physical component? So in that there is an actuator and a sensor. Actuator could be anything which is going to perform an operation. For example, it could be a reciprocating device, a piston cylinder arrangement or a hydraulic cylinder, right? That, that is called an actuator and there is a sensor which, which is attached with an actuator. Okay, so sensor is going to sense the condition of an actuator whether it is in a working condition or not and accordingly, accordingly signals are provided. Okay, so this actuator and a sensor together forms an embedded system. 
okay we can say an embedded computer now this both embedded systems are connected with the computer system okay you can clearly see over here so this is a physical component part now what uh, what is present in the cyber component part so in that case computation network for cps that is cyber physical system is provided and computational unit for a central processing is provided so all the data of a cyber physical system is given to a we can say cloud okay uh, which is going to store all the data information and going to provide a smart data and smart information along with that there will be a hmi that is a human machine interface now this hmi is basically is, uh, refers to a dashboard or a screen which is used to control machineries it is also used to translate complex data into a useful information now can i say from this diagram we can define cps so what is that it is an integration of a physical component and a cyber component very simple right integration of a computation communication that is networking and a control components tightly combined with the physical components that is our embedded system of a different nature now it could be of a mechanical type electrical type or a chemical type so we can even say that cps comprises embedded computers and a network that monitors and controls the physical process remember embedded computers and a networks that monitors that observes and that perform a control of this physical process now taking the network idea further cps can be considered as a iot enabled where iot implies that a sub systems are connected to the internet very simple okay now let's move further <clears throat> now what is cms so in context of a manufacturing cms that is cyber manufacturing system and iiot denotes a respective industrial counterparts of cps and iot which means cms uh, resembles to cps and iiot resembles to iot cms is what so we can clearly say that it is basically a cyber physical system applied for a production plant okay for producing something so that term is called a cyber manufacturing system okay or even it is called cyber physical production system now let us see the applications and the potential benefits uh, of this <coughs> cps and iiot so we can say that first benefit is intelligent automation so it is very obvious we all know that it makes a small batch sizes down to a batch size one feasible because of what programming and commissioning efforts becomes negligible now next is predictive maintenance so obviously that iiot is going to help to determine that when a machine requires a maintenance and automatic fault detection will also be provided so it will reduce the overall cost of maintenance otherwise what could happen so whenever a machine fails we are going to do a maintenance so it is going to obviously increase the cost of replacement and cost of maintenance so this would be a benefit of iiot predictive maintenance next is intelligent process control aiming for a zero waste low tooling cost minimal minimal resource consumption and short running in and production times okay next is human machine interactions which is going to lead to higher labor productivity and improved ergonomics next is feedback so we can obtain a feedback from a machine that is from a production to a engineering that improves the production system of a next generation and we can implement a new business business models by making use of this iot that leverages the seamless pipeline for a, from a customer requirements to the product delivery and a service also we can say that we can fulfill the customer needs as per his requirement okay a dynamic response can be given to the customer so th these are all the benefits of iiot now let us move further now cyber physical system we have already discussed it what is that over here we are going to see uh, various ex exciting visions and scenarios of a future for example self driving cars communicating with their surroundings so you can clearly see in a animation which is shown a uh, uh, <coughs> driver is do doesn't required to operate a car it is operating by itself uh, by using a uh, by making use of a sensors and internet of things next is ambient assist assisted living for a senior citizens who get automated assistance in a case of a medical emergency so you can clearly see in this case uh, it is going to also assist in case of a healthcare uh, healthcare system right medical emergency okay next is electricity generation and storage oriented at a real time demand are just a few examples of an immense scope of application so this mentioned example shows that a cyber physical systems are expected 
to have an impact in various domains for example mobility healthcare logistics which means a smart storage industrial productions and furthermore so this comes along with a noticeable change for citizens in their daily life and routine on a micro meso as well as a macro level now let us take an example of what are the micro meso as well as the macro levels of benefits which are obtained by a cyber physical system so we can say that whenever a individual gets a profit from our cyber physical system so that is personally so that is considered micro level for example a person is sitting in in its smart home or a smart building supported by ambient assisted living so it, he is making use of what so cyber physical system but it is benefited him personally no other person is benefited so it is considered as a micro level very small level okay next is the macro level so macro level is a one in which a physical status information and a virtual data for example in case of a traffic sensor or a traffic estimator system in which it is going to provide what location and a travel speed of each system participant so we can say a smart mobility application okay so this comes under a meso level micro is a smaller one meso is a in in between middle one okay and macro which means it is used for industrial purpose right a significant expansion of a industrial production transport and a supply effectiveness and efficiency completes the expected improvement so this comes under the macro level now the, there are certain specific points of a cms cyber manufacturing system and industrial internet of things which includes you can see the list is provided so it is integration from factories to machines and the components next life cycle integration of products and production resources which we have seen in product data management and product life cycle management then heterogeneous production infrastructure from different suppliers implementation of a new system into a system of existing machinery which means we can introduce a new business models okay uh, in case of an existing models to improve the uh, and to improve the connectivity to improve the automation to improve the communications right then a spatio temporal relationship between object in a system <clears throat> broad field of manufacturing technologies and human in versatile operating conditions so these are the specific points of cms and iot includes okay guys so in today's session uh, we are keeping up till here in our next session we are going to see the application maps of a cyber physical system so till then stay tuned and thank you all